circle walking is one of the best exercises you can do to help improve the fluidity of your walking technique. One of the reasons it's so beneficial is it prevents you from doing several of the common mistakes that people make when they're walking. One of those is leaning forward, another is pushing off with the glutes, and a third is over striding. Each of these three mistakes is difficult to do or more difficult to do when we're walking in a circle. Walking in a circle is also gonna help you better feel the rotation of the core that's required because depending on which phase of the step you're in, you're gonna have to switch up the core rotation to keep the circle going. And you're also gonna have to change the rotation as you try to walk out of the circle. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Todd Martin, creator of The Walking Code. On this channel, I focus on trying to help you learn how to walk more fluidly, walk with more confidence, and walk with lower impact on your joints. So to begin this exercise, what we're gonna do is just try to map a medium-sized circle on the floor and practice walking in that circle. As you walk, pay close attention to several things. One is your vertical posture. Keep your head floating upwards like this without any forward intention to lean. That forward intention to lean is common when we're walking forward. It'll be much more awkward to try to do that lean into the circle. So practice walking vertically. I also mentioned that as we walk in a circle, it's gonna be much more difficult to make the error of pushing with the glutes. Because when we push with the glutes, what's gonna happen is the glutes are gonna, number one, make us lean forward, but they're also going to push us out of the circle. When we are walking in a circle, it becomes much more clear that we have to use the hip to pull the body around rather than push, which is gonna push us in the opposite direction. Here's what's gonna happen. If I try to get to this position and use the glutes to push, I'm gonna fall out of the circle. We need to use the hip flexors in front to pull the body through the circle. So these muscles here are pulling the body around. And it's the same hip action that we do when we walk forward but people tend to think they're pushing off with the glutes when they are walking forward. It's much clearer that it is a pull when we're moving around in a circle. And then the third thing that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is not over striding. It's very easy to over stride or take too long of a step when we're walking in a straight line when we're walking in a smooth circle, it's gonna be much easier not to overstride. So focus on vertical posture, focus on the feeling of pulling. You're gonna especially feel that pull when you have the inside leg forward pulling around. And then not overstriding. For a normal stride length, I should be able to take a step and then unwind and my feet should be shoulder width apart. That would be the same if I'm walking forward. If I'm walking forward in a normal stride, I should be able to pivot inward and my feet should be shoulder width apart. But that's gonna be much easier to accomplish when we walk in a circle. So those are the three first things to focus on. Vertical posture, feeling of pulling, and not over striding. After you've practiced for a while, then what you're gonna do is reverse directions and walk in a circle in the opposite direction. The next thing I want you to focus on that's going to make the core rotation a little bit clearer is figure out what's happening with your arm swing. If you're walking correctly, when your inside leg is forward, your arm on that side should begin to swing forward 
only after you begin the swing through. So as I begin to swing through with my left leg, my right arm is gonna go forward. So just watch as that happens. Left leg is going to release as the right arm goes forward. So that is one thing to pay attention to. And then the opposite arm is going to go forward beginning as you put down the heel of the outside leg. So as I bring down the heel of the outside leg, I'm gonna bring my arm on that same side forward because that is the core rotation that's going to bring the heel down and bring the arm forward. So practice the feel of the smooth arm swing. It should become very relaxed. The final thing I wanna have you work on with the circle walk is exiting the circle. So we have practiced going in the circle. I'm gonna do one full circle. I'm gonna complete another full circle. And then I'm going to smoothly exit out in a straight line. That is something that's gonna make you rethink what's going on with your core to make it happen correctly. We're going to need to use the core in a different way when we're walking in the circle than we are when we are walking out in a straight line. So if you practice that without so much thinking about the difference in the core movement, you may be able to pick up what's happening. See if you can do it very consciously. Decide which step is gonna be the last step of the circle and then exit with conscious control from the circle. The easiest place to exit, which I would practice first, is exiting the circle when the outside leg is forward. So when my left leg is forward, I'm going to exit the circle in a straight line. I would practice that because that's the most natural place to exit the circle. Now let me explain a little bit about what is happening that's going to allow you to exit the circle versus stay in the circle. When we are staying in the circle and we place the outside leg, we are using the upper and lower core muscles. External obliques here on the left, internal obliques here on the right. I am rotating to put the heel down with my external obliques, so turning forward and clockwise. I maintain the clockwise rotation of the internal obliques at the same time, so all of my waist is turning to the right or clockwise as I shift to the flat foot position. This rotation of the upper and lower waist sets up the turn. Then we exit in the swing through phase of the step just like we would a normal step. But because we set it up with the turn, it's going to have us curving around in this direction. And then what we're gonna do is use the lower abs on the right to place the heel. First, you'll have to understand that when you do the swing through, you're changing the root or the weight to the standing leg. So my lower abs, which are currently turning to the right, are gonna turn to the left as I do the swing through. So my root is now on the left leg. To continue walking in the circle, we place the foot by taking the lower abs from left to right, and that brings the weight down and brings it forward. Then we execute the same action for the swing through that we did before. My root is on the right, upper waist is now turning to the left. To place the outside foot again, now we're gonna use the upper waist on the left to place the heel, the lower abs on the right are still active. So we just continue that motion going until we hit the flat foot position and then we swing through again. Now we use the lower abs to place the heel and shift forward and then swing through with the lift technique. And we use that series of rotations to walk in the smooth circle. When it's time to exit the circle, we need to switch up the core rotation in a different manner. And I'm gonna exit the circle going this way. 
coming around with the outside leg, first placing the heel with the upper waist. And if I was gonna continue turning, I would continue the lower abs going in the same direction, clockwise. That sets up the turn to keep going this way. If I wanna exit the circle, what I do is place the heel, but then I change the lower ab rotation back to root my left leg. And then when I swing through, I'm gonna be exiting in a straight line. So I just change the lower ab rotation a little bit earlier between the time of the heel placement and the foot coming down to the flat position. I activate the lower abs on this side if I want to go forward. If I want to turn, I delay the rotation of the lower ab change until after I've hit the flat foot position. So I've set up the turn here, then I swing through. If I wanna exit in a straight line, after placing the heel, I set up a straight line using the lower abs and then I can walk straight out. So practice that, four or maybe five things. Vertical posture, not pushing, focus on pulling from the front of the hip, focus on not over striding, which is pretty easy if you keep in the circle, practice consciousness of the swing of the arm, and then practice exiting the circle in a controlled fashion when you decide to do it. And then try to think about the feeling of what's going on in the core as you exit that circle. If you do that, you're gonna have much more control over the fluidity of your walking technique. You're gonna be able to control the placement of your foot, control the shifting of your weight, and control the swing through without letting momentum be the thing that is pulling you through each step. We're using core rotation to fluidly guide you through every step.